Hi, I'm Bill from CJ Pony Parts. If you ever bought a brand new Mustang like our 2015 here, or even picked up a used stock Mustang, the following scenario is probably pretty familiar. When you first get the car, everything's great. Looks great, sounds great, plenty of power, no reason to change a the thing. Then you kind of get used to it and think, you know, I wish it was maybe a little bit louder. And on goes an aftermarket exhaust system. Then you start thinking, you know what? Maybe a little more power would be nice. Colder kit in a tune usually takes care of that problem as well. Then you start thinking, you know what? It looks great. I wish it was just a little bit lower. Lowering your Mustang has a lot of performance benefits, but one of the main benefits is simply looks good lowered. So today we're going to show you how to lower a 2015 Mustang using iBox Pro Kit Springs. With 19 and 20 inch wheels being available, the wheel gap in the new Mustang is nowhere near as bad as the older models, but it still sits pretty high. The iBox Spring Kit is going to come with coil springs, new bump stops, and new dust boots and is going to lower our 2015 GT approximately 1 inch in the front and 1.1 inches in the back. For this installation, they need a lift or a jack and jack stands, half inch impact gun or half inch ratchet, 13 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 18 millimeter socket, 21 millimeter socket, 22 millimeter socket, 24 millimeter socket, a few different extensions, 15 millimeter wrench, 17 millimeter wrench, panel removal tool, hammer, and a spring compressor. While the control arm geometry has changed, if you've ever done an S197 spring, it's gonna look pretty familiar and the process is basically the same. Disconnect from the spindle, disconnect up here, and remove your factory strut and spring assembly. Unlike the previous generation, your strut mount is held into the strut tower with only three bolts instead of the usual four. If you're gonna remove two of them, leave one of them just a little bit loose so the strut hangs, making it easier to remove. First thing we'll do is get the ABS line out of the way. There's one clip that's held on here, another one in the middle of the strut body. Once we move the ABS line, put a wrench on the back of your sway bar and remove the nut. To remove the spindle from the strut, you gotta remove these nuts here. Fortunately, to the bottom one, you're not gonna be able to get to with your stock brake calipers in the way. So we're gonna remove these two bolts here to remove the brake caliper. You wanna move the caliper safely out of the way, you can lay it back here. Pull the rotor off as well to give us some more room. Now we can remove the nuts that hold the spindle to the strut. Actually, I'm going to take them off and then put them on just a little bit again. I'll show you why in a minute. Bolts going into the spindle have splines on the other end, so you can't put anything on there to turn them off, they're not going to turn. What you have to do is tap on both sides to push them out. Okay, now I'll finish removing the last nut from the top. and remove the stock assembly. To remove the factory springs, you'll need a spring compressor so we can compress the spring, remove the nut from the top of the strut to remove our strut now. Now remove the nut from the strut. and release tension on the spring compressor. Here you see a comparison between our Eibach progressive rate spring and our factory spring. Obviously there's a massive height difference. For a spring that only lowers it an inch, the spring is much, much shorter, giving you an idea how soft the factory springs really are. 
We'll start the new spring assembly by installing the new bump stop and new supplied dust boot. This will actually pop right into the channel at the top and slide it over. Now we're gonna compress the I-box spring so we can install it on the car. Reinstall the strut mount. We'll tighten down the strut nut. And now we can remove the spring compressor. Now we'll put our new strut assembly back in the car. You line up the top studs, make sure this is facing the proper way. You can turn it, but it's easier if it's lined up to start with. Once the strut's back in place, now we can reinstall the bolts that hold the spindle to the strut. Now as we tighten these down, it'll pull the splines in from the other side. Put the sway bar back in. Reinstall our rotor and caliper. A little trick to do is put the rotor back on Put one lug nut on at the bottom to hold it in place makes it a lot easier to line up the caliper. Once you're done there, snap the ABS line back into place. And finally, we'll tighten down the strut mount nuts. I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side and we can move on to the rear springs. Due to the IRS change for 15, the rear suspension is gonna be completely different. So it's not gonna be like any other install you've ever done on an S197 car. If you get the springs out, we found the best thing to do is actually lower the subframe by disconnecting the shock and the subframe bolts and slowly lower it down to remove the spring. If you want to remove both rear wheels, it makes the job a lot easier. Since we're going to be lowering the subframe down to get the spring out, the first thing you want to do is support it. So we remove the bolts, it's held up, and then we can slowly lower it down. We'll start by loosening up the two bolts here that connect the subframe to the body. take them all the way out, just loosen them up so we have some play. So you can see the factory rear brake hose makes a rather sharp turn. Since we're pulling the subframe down, this is actually going to get tighter. So to be safe, we're going to remove the brackets. There's more play with the brake hose. Once that's loosened up, before we lower the subframe, just connect the two bolts that hold the shock body to the body itself. We'll start with the rear subframe to body bolt. And now the front. Now we'll lower it down. And you can pull down on the subframe and pull out the spring.
the bump stop is located inside the shock. So we're gonna remove the shock cover, we're gonna remove the factory cover and bump stop. Remove the mount and the factory dust boot. And retain the factory dust boot, remove the original bump stop simply by pushing down. The new one in the place. Ready to install. Slide the new bump stop over. There we go. Press it down the bottom. We'll reinstall the mount and the nut. Reinstall the stock isolator and put it back in the car. You want to make sure it's seated properly in the lower isolator as well. and lift it back into place. Once it's up in place, reinstall the shock bolts. There's actually two stops on top here, so you know the mount's in the right place when it touches them. I'll we'll tighten these back down. Now I'll reinstall the brake line. I'll put the bolts back into place for the subframe. Get them started by hand just to make sure they're lined up. And finally tighten down the two front bolts of the body. I'll remove the jack. We want to repeat the process on the other side and your installation is finished. The Eibach Pro Kit Springs are going to make your 2015 Mustang handle better, have less body roll, and less brake dive. The thing you're really going to notice, though, is how much better it looks. Dropping the car an inch made a huge difference in the stance and the overall attitude of a 2015 Mustang. The installation should take you between two and three hours, so you'll be back on the road in no time.